Hey guys, it's Chi again. In the previous lesson, we had two questions. I only solved one in that lesson. I'm going to solve the next one in this lesson. So we can see that the diagram has two supports similar to that of the previous question. But the difference is this one has two point loads of 5 kN and 10 kN and a total span of 10 meters. So the first step is to draw a free body diagram. You have your straight line beam, you have your supports RA and RB, then you have your 5 kN point load on your 10 kN point load. You have the span 3 meters, 4 meters, and 3 meters. So now that we've successfully drawn our free body diagram, we move over to the next step, which is applying the three equations of equilibrium. Firstly, we're going to start with summation f of y and then summation f of m. We all know why I'm, I'm skipping the summation f of x part because we do not have any horizontal force here because it's equal to zero. So it's almost always neglected. Then summation f of y means summation of all the vertical forces. So if you look at the diagram, we will find out that we have four forces. We have the RA, 5 kN, 10 kN, and the support RB. These are four vertical forces. So recall that forces acting upwards are treated as positive forces, and forces acting downwards are treated as negative forces. So we have RA, which is a positive force, plus minus 5, which is a negative force, minus 10, plus RB is equal to 0. So we can rewrite it as RA plus RB minus 5 minus 10 is equal to 0. So we have RA plus RB minus 15 is equal to zero because minus 5 minus 10 will give you minus 15 so you have ra plus rb is equal to 15 kilonewton we take that as our equation one moving on to summation of moments i told you in the previous lesson that we can take moments about any support we can choose to take moment about a then take moment about b in the previous lesson, we took moments about RA, then we substituted the value for RB into our equation 1. But in this lesson, I'm going to take moments about both supports, then we can do our check. That is to know if you are correct or not. So taking moments about point RA, all forces acting about this point is equal to 0. So we are left with three forces, which is a 5 kN, 10 kN, and the RV. So remember, moment is a product of force times perpendicular distance from the point of turning to the line of action. And since we are taking moments about RA, we know that our line of action is our RA. So taking moments about support RA, or rather point A, we have 5 times 3 and since it's going towards this direction we know that it is a clockwise moment and clockwise moments are positive moments while anti-clockwise moments are negative moments so this is going to be 5 times 3 since 3 is the perpendicular distance between 5 kN and RA so that will be 5 times 3 plus the next force is a 10 kN force and since it's going towards the same direction, it's a clockwise moment. So it's a positive one. So it plus 10 times 4 plus 3, which is the distance from 10 to RA, which is 7. So we have 10 times 7 plus the next moment, which is going to be RB times the total distance because the distance from RA to RB is the total distance and RB is going in an anti-clockwise manner so it's a negative moment so we have minus RB times 10 equal 
to 0. Solving, we have 15 plus 70 minus 10 RB is equal to 0. Collecting like terms, we have 15 plus 70 is equal to 10 RB. And this will give me 85 is equal to 10 RB. Divide both sides by 10. We have RB is equal to 85 divided by 10. That will give me 8.5 kN. Now that's the value for RB. In order to get the value for RE, we are going to take moments about RB. So taking moments about RB is the same thing. Firstly, we start with our RA, then 5, then 10. Since we have three facets, because all the facets acting at the point RB will be equal to 0. So we can see that RA is acting upwards. And since it's acting upwards and we are taking moments about RB, it's going to go in this direction. It's going to take this path. So it's a clockwise moment. So it's going to be RA times the total distance, which is distance from RA, which is the turning point to the line of action. That is 10 meters. So it's going to be RA times 10. Then we move over to the next force, which is the 5 kN. And since it's acting towards RB, it's going to move in this direction, which makes it an anti-clockwise moment. And it's going to be multiplied by its distance, which is 7 which is four plus three. So we have minus five times seven. Then we move over to the next one, which is 10. So we have 10 times three. It's an anti-clockwise moment. So we have minus 10 times three. Summation of all of them will be equated to zero. So we have 10 RA minus 35 minus 30 is equal to zero. Collecting like terms, we have 10 RA is equal to 35 plus 30 then we have 10 ra is equal to 65 divide both sides by 10 we have ra is equal to 65 divided by 10 we have ra is equal to 6.5 kilonewton now that is the value for ra so now we have both values ra and rb ra is 6.5 and rb is 8.5 from the equation 1, which we had, Ra plus Rb is equal to 15 kN, we can now substitute the values we got for Ra and Rb. And if it gives us 15 kN, then you are correct. But if it doesn't, then you know something went wrong somewhere and you have to try again. So let's check to see if we are correct. So we have Ra plus Rb is equal to 15 kN. And we have our Ra as 6.5. We have 6.5 plus. We have our Rb as 8.5. So we have 6.5 plus 8.5 equal to 15 kilonewtons. So yeah, we are correct. So you can either use this method or use the method in the previous lesson. So that will be all for this lesson, guys. In my next lesson, I'm going to be treating the uniformly distributed loads. I'm going to be telling you how to compute super reaction when you have a uniformly distributed load, okay? Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like and comment. Also hit the notification button if you like to get updates as to when I release a new video. Thank you.